Welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there, AstroVenturers. Welcome back. If you're new to this astrophotography channel, my name is George and this is the astrophotography channel for DSLR or mirrorless camera bodies combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star checker like the Sky Guider Pro or the Star Adventurer. Uh, today, what I wanted to take a look at is the, the buttons and ports that are located on the Sky Guider Pro. Uh, this little unit will do more than most people will ever uh, dive into or really even learn what it can do. And fact is, most of us are not going to read the instruction manual. So, you're going to get on to YouTube and look for a video just like this. So let's go ahead and dive into this and explore all of the capabilities, connections, and things of the SkyGuider Pro. To get started, we're going to take a look at the top side of the SkyGuider Pro. So first off, this here being your on-off switch to power it on and off. And then this light here is your indicator that you have power. My suggestion, whenever you are charging up your SkyGuider Pro and you have it plugged into the micro SD slot on the back side of the unit, you'll want to have this on with the LED indicator lit up because when this reaches full charge, it will start to flash at you. Okay, moving across these lights here at the top, this first one here is to match a tracking speed for the sun. Again, if you're going to track the sun, make sure that you're using a solar filter for it. Uh, understand that welding glass is not going to do the trick. You actually need a solar filter. Next, if we press this round button, it will then toggle us over to the moon. So it will track with the moon speed. So there we go. And we have moved over to the moon speed. This next one is a one half speed. And what that's going to do is track at half the speed of the stars. The idea is, is to try and find a happy medium between the landscape in front of you and the stars in the sky that you are trying to photograph. Um, personally, I don't recommend it. I would really suggest a composite between the foreground uh, and the night sky, uh, in my opinion. You're kind of splitting the difference and neither one will make you happy. And to get over to this, again, you would press the round button like you saw me do earlier. The next one is your one time speed. This is the speed at which we track the stars. Again, you would just press this toggle and it will take you over to the one time speed. Now, if you want to go over to the southern hemisphere, what you're going to do, and first off, I'm going to go ahead and toggle this over and get myself to the stars. Okay, so I'm on the stars, and now I want to go to, say, Southern Hemisphere, because that's where I'm located. I'm going to press and hold the center button. It's now flashing, and by pressing this button again, you will toggle between Southern Hemisphere and Northern. Southern, Northern. Once you have selected what you need, because um, I'm sure at some point it probably times out. What I do is once I have what I need, I'm going to press this again, get to the north. I just shut the unit off and then I turn it back on. That way I break that sequence of toggling back and forth between northern and southern hemisphere. Now, if you are wanting to increase or decrease the brightness of the indicator light, if your unit is, is equipped with a reticle versus an eye polar camera, what you would again do is press and hold this. We are set to the south. I'm going to press and hold this again. And now the light indicator for the reticle has come up. To increase or decrease that, you can press these arrow keys and it will increase or decrease the light of the reticle. Press again and hold, and I can get out of it. I'm going to toggle myself back over 
to the one time speed and I am back to the stars. So up top, that's everything we uh, are going to use there. Um, well, actually, let me address this here. Uh, these arrows, when you are not in the reticle light indicator, these are actually to rotate your sky guider to the left or to the right. So you can actually slew left and right uh, to make adjustments. Um, now, obviously, this unit does not adjust an altitude, but we can left to right. So there you go. Now, let's readjust and jump to the back of the Sky Guider Pro and take a look at the ports and the camera. Okay, here we are on the back side of the camera, and I, I hope I can hold this nice and steady so that I don't make anybody seasick. Uh, starting at the left side here, as it is labeled guide. This is for an ST4 cable connection, and this is to connect something like an ASI Air to the system so that you can do guiding. And what that will do is, as you have your guide scope connected, your guide camera connected to this ASI Air and then onto the guide port, this will make micro adjustments to the right or to the left to maintain a higher level of tracking during the night. Uh, next, we have this little camera indicator. This is a trigger release for the camera shutter. We'll get to that in just a second and discuss that a little bit more, but that's what that is. You would connect this to your camera. Next over here, we have the USB charging port, standard micro USB. Uh, next over here, we have the HBX. This is for a hand controller for the SkyGuider Pro. Um, honestly, I've never seen one. I've never known anybody that actually uses one. And the reason being is because with the fact that we have to manually locate our targets and set up our tracking, um, I haven't found anybody that's found real value in using the hand controller because of the fact you're having to do everything manually. Uh, through the use of the hand controller, that's where you would trigger your camera for taking photographs. Um, but however, like I said, I've never seen anybody that actually uses the hand controller. Okay, jumping down here, if you have an iPolar camera, this is the cable connection that you will use for the iPolar. Um, normally what would sit here would be the reticle. Okay, there you have it. That is everything on the backside of a SkyGuider Pro. This cap, in my case, covers up the camera to the iPolar. If you do not have the iPolar, then this cap would be covering the reticle. Down below here, this is the clutch to release the mechanism so that you can rotate your setup. Last part I wanted to cover was the bottom side of the SkyGuider Pro. Now, normally we mount this up in our wedge using this dovetail. However, the SkyGuider Pro does come equipped with a quarter and three eighths inch uh, mount. And this is set at the quarter. You would remove this and that would give you the ability to mount to a 3 8 So that is also an option. Uh, again, I don't know anybody uh, that uses it similar to the hand controller connection, but it is there. And I love the fact that SkyGuider has decided to put it there rather than deciding whether you need it or not. So there you have it. Um, all of the buttons across the top, how to use them and what they're doing and all of the ports that are on the back side of the SkyGuider Pro to include the iPolar camera, which this one is equipped with. Well, until next time, I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights.